Hi everybody, I'm Timoteo Carletti from the University of Namur in Belgium and I work at Maxis, the Namur Institute for Complex Systems. And now I present some joint work about some random work hypergraph processes that I did with some collaborators of mine, Lucio Fanelli from the University of Florence in Italy, Roland Biot from the University of Oxford, uh, Federico Battiston, Giulia Cencetti and Sara Nicoletti. I don't think I need to stress too much you the importance of network science for you that are present to this kind of conference. Indeed, networks determine a very general framework where to model very different kind of phenomena, and this is one of the main reasons of the strength of network science. Given any kind of system, we identify the basic units that we call nodes, and then we connect two nodes if they do interact. This determines also the limitation of network size. Indeed, networks can only handle cases where binary interactions are allowed for, or in any cases where we can neglect high order interactions. There are, however, more and more empirical examples where data are available that show that high order interactions play a relevant role. There are several possibilities to deal with uh, such high order interactions, one of which is the hypergraphs. There are generalizations of networks where now node can interact in groups or of arbitrary sizes, they are called hyperedges. In such way, we can overcome the pervariant interaction limitation that is with network. Without entering too much in the details, mathematical details, an hypergraph is uh, given an ensemble of nodes that uh, again the basic units. Then you group such nodes in, in subset of different sizes called hyperedges that are in my picture represented by color of different sizes. Then you can encode an hypergraph using the high incidence matrix that I call EI alpha, whose element is 1 if and only if node i belongs to the hyperedge alpha, otherwise it's 0. From this matrix, one can construct the hyper adjacency matrix A, where AIJ is the number of hyperedges that contain both uh, nodes i and j. We can also construct the hyperedges matrix C was entries C alpha beta is a number of nodes that belongs to both hyperedge alpha and beta. This is the size of the intersection. Represent co-authorship networks where uh, nodes are authors of papers and a paper is an hyperedge. A, a paper written by several authors is to say an hyperedge contains several authors. Or hypergraph can represent social networks where uh, nodes again are agents and the hyper, uh, hyper edges are the group of agents sharing some common feature. We will see in the end other application of hypergraphs. Let us define the random world process on hypergraph, assuming for the moment the hypergraph to represent a co-authorship network, where nodes are authors and hyper edges are papers. The point is that an idea can jump from one author to the other, and, the, and this idea will spread more easily among nodes belonging to the same hyperedge, and this is more important if the hyperedge is large, because the idea can branch forth among persons in the same hyperedge. And then at that point, this idea can go to another agent belonging to another hyperedge, and so on. So you can model the probability to jump from node i, the black node that I present here, to one node, say j, j prime, or j second, lying in another hyperedge, but they, they, they share the node i, using the formula that I wrote there, where c alpha alpha is the hyperedge size, minus 1 is because I do not consider the idea, the random work, to stay on the same node, so it is obliged to jump at every time steps, and then the point is that the node i and node j should both belong to the same hyperedge alpha, and then I take into account all possible uh, hyperedges containing both i and j. Uh, tau is a, a nonlinear parameter that in the formula will put equal to 1, but this can be more or less important to the hyperedge sizes. Because of the limited amount of time that I have, I will not go in details, but I invite you to read this paper on PRE that we recently published with some colleagues. From the matrix K, I, J, we can compute the transition probability, say just normalizing, that is T, T I, J, and given P, I, T, the probability to find the walk on node I at M, T, you can compute the random walk as, as usual, as the probability to find the walk on node I at time 
t plus 1 knowing where all the nodes where it can be at the previous time. Once you have this, you can also compute a Laplace matrix, Lij, which is nothing but the identity minus the transition probabilities, and Kih is the hyper degrees of node i. In this way, you can prove that this is indeed a Laplace matrix, and you can also prove that the existence of a stationary distribution that I call Pi infinity, which you recall if you replace the hyper degrees with the degrees, the standard distribution for the random walk of node networks. Indeed, one can prove if the all hyper edges have size 2, then the hypergraph is indeed a standard network, and then the hyper degrees becomes a degree. The Laplace matrix that I just introduced is the standard Laplace matrix, and also the, st the stationary distribution do coincide with the classical one. So, this is a real extension of the random walk on networks to the random walk on hypergraphs. To compare this new random work process with the one defined on networks, let us observe that given an hypergraph, you can project it in different ways into networks, and you can obtain uh, binary networks, the, the, the projected one is the B, or a weighted network, or with several links among the same couple of nodes, the yeah, multigraph, which is the projection of A, or you can also obtain this equivalent weighted network project projection C, where you can prove that the, the dynamics on hypergraph and the dynamics on this projected network are orbitally equivalent, so the probability of, of transition and also the probability stationary are exactly the same. So in the following we will compare the dynamics on the hypergraph with the dynamics on the projected network. In a projected network the idea is that you replace an hyper edge with a click of the suitable size. So if you have a three hyper edge, then you have a click, a three click. Okay, because you know that random walk can be used to rank node by the relevance, say the time spent by the walk on this node, we can use the same idea on uh, random walk on hypergraph. And I can start to show you there are some differences. The first difference is, th is a ranking inversion that you can have. Indeed, if you consider the two uh, hyper graph in the top, the, the one with three hyper edges of size 2, the blue one, or the one with a large hyper edge of size 3, then you, you can compute use the formula that I showed you before, that the hyper degrees of one case is 3 and the other is 4. So the node j is ranked above node i because he has hyper degrees 4. However, when I project on this click projection, the node i has degrees 3, while node j has degrees 2, and then the rank of i is larger than the rank of j. So, we are in presence of a rank inversion. If you use the hypergraph to model your data, the node j will be above node i, while if you use the click projection network to uh, model your data, the, the node i will be ranked above the, the, the node j. So to better understand this phenomenon, let us consider a simple network where we have a full control of the involved parameter. The model is the following. You have uh, an hypergraph where you have a certain number of binary interactions, the blue hyper edges, and you have a sort of central node that I call h, is a sort of hub, but then you have a, a large uh, hyper edge, here is a size seven, uh, 6, where you have a node C. When you project on the project click network, then you have a real hub, the node H, and a 6 click, where I emphasize the node C, which is the bridge between the hub and the click. So the idea is to study this ranking inversion when I change the parameter m, which is so the size of the hubness, when I fix the click size to 6. In this figure that I, that I took from the paper that I quoted uh, above, so we fix the size k equal to 6 of the hyper edge of the click, and then we let vary m, the up degree, from 1 up to a larger value, so here is 40. And we report the asympt asymptotic probability to find the walker on the hub, that are denoted by circle, or on the node C, the bridge between the uh, click uh, and the hub, that is uh, uh, the square. Higher value of, the, uh, of this uh, probability means the, the node is ranked uh, above the other. 
The green symbols refer to the click projected network, while the orange ones to the hypergraph. For, for small value of m, here 5 in this picture, the node C is the first ranked both on the click network, on the projection, and on the hypergraph. You can see because the squares are above the circle. On the other hand, for intermediate value, say from 6 up to 26, there is a ranking inversion. The node C is the first ranked in the hypergraph because the orange square are above the orange circle, while on the click projection network is the H node which is below, which is above because it's the first one. The green circles are above the green square. So this, uh, if this uh, simple network and the hypergraph would represent a, a authorship network, this means that if you rank authors using the hypergraph or using the projected network, you will have an inversion or ranking. So someone which is first in one uh, case can could not be the same in the other projection. And this will depend on the number of papers that uh, uh, she wrote, but also on the size of the co-authorship groups with whom she co-authored the a paper. To show you the importance of such observation, I here post an analysis that we did on this paper about the archive. We did for all the uh, subgroup of archives, but here I here show the one the result for the high energy physics which is a large group divided in four subgroups, the experimental one, the physics, the theoretical, and the lattice. And here I report on the horizontal axis the ranking of given by the projection network, on the vertical axis the ranking given by the hypergraph. And each point is a notor that is so ranked according to the two dimensions. If the two ranks were, were the same, that, then all the points should lie on the uh, bisection of this uh, the square, while you see that there are spread uh, uh, among the different quadrants. In particular, there are points that belong to the uh, top left, where this means that they are higher ranked with respect to the hypergraph and less ranked with respect to the projection, or you have points in the in bottom right where the opposite occurs. And this actually depends on the size of the Cauchy groups, because if you look at the uh, HEPX, which is the experiment, you can expect here a paper written by a very large group of persons. And so here, even if you write a, a smaller number of papers, because of the size of your co-authorship group, you are better ranked than other person that write maybe a number of papers larger, but in smaller group. In the theoretical part, the red one, this is the opposite because you expect that what is really important is the number of papers more than the size of the, your group. To conclude, let me propose two applications of this random walk uh, process on a hypergraph. The first one is a classification. Here the uh, hypergraph is a, a zoo, a zoo database, the UCI, where you have uh, 100 animals and each uh, so the nodes, uh, each animal has 16 possible features that are hyper edge. And the idea is to recognize among these 100 animals the seven classes, mammals, uh, fishes, and so on. If you do this projection, so you, you do the rank using the process that I show you, and then you uh, use the uh, embedding of the first three, uh, in this case, eigenvectors of the Laplace matrix, you can do this using the hypergraph. You got the picture on the, on the left where you can see uh, each year, each color represents one class or say mammals, uh, fishes and so on. And then you can see that the classes are quite well distributed one from the other. So you can recognize such classes if you do some kind of search. While if you use the projection of this uh, network into the standard click, then the classes are very and not very well diversified. Uh, indeed, you can see the yellow and the black, but the rest, the 100 animals also on the right, that are all on the same uh, point. The second application is really a new paper that uh, is about community detection, because you know that uh, using a random walk, in particular, the mass of stability framework, you can compute the, 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 the communities and the stability of the community. We extend recently this uh, idea to the hypergraph setting, where taking into account the time spent on each group of nodes, you can reconstruct the community detection, which in some sense take 
care of the hyperedge structure and this information is lost or completely lost in the case you project on the uh, projected network. With this I finished my presentation and uh, I would like to thank you, you and organizer for inviting me uh, to organize uh, this BNET uh, conference every year and so are there any questions?